this is astrologer coach Sonia Francis and today we're going to be talking about the upcoming new moon which will be in almost 16 degrees of Pisces on March 6th at 11.04 a.m. East Coast time in the U.S. which is also New York time and 4.04 p.m. Uh, London time. So uh, of course a new moon always marks a new moon cycle and this new moon uh, of course is an especially introverted time because it's going to be in Pisces so with every new moon of course we go within to learn what we wish ourselves to align with for the next 28 days energetically speaking and we also might want to set some intentions now we will talk about the best and most potent times to set those intentions at the end of this video so stay tuned for that and please also take advantage of the timestamps that I have uh, created and added to the description part of this video below the video in case you want to watch the video in shorter sequences or you need to come back to something or you want to come back to one of the coaching questions or anything like that um, all right so let's get started so what's Pisces what's the energy of Pisces all about now the Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac um, and it connects us to our spiritual journey as uh, it represents the reunion that we have with source, God, or the universe, whatever you want to call it. Now, when Pisces is at its highest vibration, it unifies all dualities. It is completely aware of the oneness of everything that exists. And so um, Pisces really wants us to uh, experience a union within ourselves and with everything around us um, and so we want to be able to really tap into this feeling of union so one thing you can ask yourself here with this new moon and something you might want to engage with for the next 28 days is am I in other words do I exist and this is a very simple question you can just allow yourself to tune into that and just check you know am I do I exist and could I let that be enough just for right now and that's an important two questions right because feel free to actually keep repeating these questions until you feel completely relaxed and at peace because what happens is if if we actually get present to that we are that there is an, an awareness or a beingness that exists and we can actually let that be enough that really helps us to fully tune into that union with with God with universe with source and so that's a really beautiful thing to do so feel free to use these two questions and experiment and see how that works for you now uh, another experiment I want to do is close your eyes for now and just ask yourself Am I my body or am I more than that? And get really, really check, you know, am I my body or am I more than that? And just see what comes up. And then ask yourself, am I the sounds that I can hear inside and outside of my head or am I more than that? And really check, right? Because there's a lot of, stuff that goes on between the ears very often right and so am I the sounds that I can hear inside and outside of my head or am I more than that and then am I the sensations that I can feel and receive or am I more than that so check in check in with your body check in with your energy field am I the sensations that I can feel and receive or am I more than that and if I am more than any of those things again keep your eyes closed as you're doing these questions if I am more than any of those things where do I begin and where do I end and really check so just take a moment and just feel into that where do I begin and where do I end? And you will start to feel this tremendous expansion inside of you as you're doing this. 
Now, if you want to have access to the New Moon questions from this video in writing, uh, and also to the members only full moon video every month, because that's available too, uh, feel free to check out the various levels of memberships that are available on my website at astrologercoach.com. Uh, if you're already a member of my online community, please go to the blog page and look for the tag New Moon Questions or a New Moon in Pisces article. Both of those will get, get you to, to the New Moon Questions. The tags can be found on the right-hand side, uh, right side of the blog page uh, below the categories. So you just have to kind of scroll down if, if you're on a computer. If you're on your phone looking for tags, then you have to go all the way to the bottom underneath all of the blog posts, and that's where the categories and the tags are. So that's a little bit more cumbersome to get all the way down there. Now, anyways, let's go back to the new moon video. Let's talk a little bit more about Pisces. Now, Pisces is accepting and aware of its inter eternal nature. It lovingly allows all because it knows that there is no real separation between things and that separation really only exists in the mind. So we have to actually go into our thinking process in order to feel separation. If we're not, if we're out of our mind, if we're not in our mind, we actually don't feel that separation. We feel the union. We feel the oneness. So, um, Let's talk a little bit about the lower vibration of Pisces as well, because obviously we're going to be aware of both, right? The higher and the lower. Now, or as I like to call it, the, the lighter and the denser vibration, right? Because lower vibration seems a little bit more like a judgment, but it's really a denser vibration and a lighter vibration. The higher vibration has more spaciousness and therefore it's lighter. Um, when there's less spaciousness and more clutter, then uh, it's denser, right? And that's, that's why it feels heavier sometimes, right? What we call the lower vibration. Now, uh, Pisces, at this denser vibration, feels separate, fearful, and victimized. And so it wants to escape. Pisces, at, at its denser vibration, wants to escape the harsh realities of the physical world. Um, and so we get trapped in this lower vibration or in this denser vibration when we don't go within to connect with our own divinity, when we don't get enough rest, when we can't trust ourselves or our inner processes or our intuitive selves, that's when we really get trapped in, in these denser vibrations. So what you can ask yourself here is what is in the way of a connection to my inner divinity for myself. And this could be something that, that may not always be there. It could just be there sometimes. So you can also just say, you know, what is in the way of my connection to my inner divinity today, if you're using it, you know, for a particular day. And what prevents me from slowing down, tuning inwards, and trusting my inner guidance? What prevents me from that? And feel free to like journal on that, right? To write down like what are some of the things that prevent me from, from, from those things, from slowing down and, and, and going inward and, and my inner guidance. And what if I opened just 5% to the perfection of life? And what if I trusted 5% more to universal timing? 5% more. And remember, the reason why I use 5% is because, you know, we want to give ourselves baby steps, right? We don't want to overwhelm ourselves with like having to do it all perfectly or having to go from zero to 100% all the time. Because that's what's expected of us in the world out there anyways all the time or a lot of the time. But it's not really realistic. So we want to give ourselves a bit of a, sl a bit of slack and give ourselves baby steps. So what if I trusted 5% more in, uh, to the universal timing of things? And just, you know, also think about what is universal timing for you? What does that even mean, right? What, what, do you, what do you get when you hear that word or those two words? And then might plenty of downtime and rest actually support my reconnection to source energy or to my intuitive self? 
And that's a really, really wonderful question. And I really want you to, to either journal or meditate on that. And to also experiment with that and see what happens. You know, if you give yourself plenty of downtime and rest, you know, see what happens to your connection to source. See what happens to your connection to your intuitive self. Right? Experiment with it. And please remember to use these questions in this video for contemplation, for meditation, for journaling, rather than simply answering the question. And also know that you don't have to use all of the questions in the video. Use the ones that resonate most with you and leave the rest. You do not have to use all the questions. This is just so that everybody gets something from, from this video and also so that you can really align yourself with the energies as they are currently going on and, and for the next 28 days with this new moon. Okay. Now this new moon also aligns with Neptune in Pisces, which is also the ruler of Pisces. And so this ampl amplifies the message of all of this even more, you know, this message of going within, getting in touch with our own inner divine light. Very important for the next 28 days. Now ask yourself, what might cause my heart to expand 5% more than usual? What might that be? One of the things that comes to mind for me when I, when I wrote that question was my cats. Pets, right? Animals can really open our hearts. And, and again, that doesn't have to be all of it, right? But I just wanted to share that because that's something that came to me right away when I wrote the question. But feel free to really give yourself time to answer that question and journal on that and see, or maybe even just observe in your day-to-day -day life, you know, what causes your heart to expand 5% more? When, when do you feel that, that heart expansion? When does that happen? What do you see? What do you hear? What do you, who do you interact with? Or what are you doing for yourself in that moment when you're feeling that? And what already in my current environment opens my heart? Right? So anything that's already here now, you know, as you're sitting where you are or in, your, in the environment that you're currently in, what already in your current environment opens your heart? And what might change for me if I knew for certain that everything is proceeding according to plan? And that can be a tough one sometimes, right? Because very often we don't trust what we don't see, right? But if we, if we, in the Pisces world, in the Pisces world, it is about the unseen. It's about what's, what's beyond the real world, what's beyond the stuff that we can touch and taste and see and hear, right? Pisces is, is beyond all of that. So what might change for me if I knew for certain that everything is proceeding according to plan all the time? What might happen if I had that, that, that knowingness, that, that trust? And what might reconnect me to a spiritual trust? What might that be? You know, trusting life, trusting the divine, trusting in my connection to a higher self, to source. You know, what might reconnect me to all of that? What, what activities or what practice or, um, you know, what tool could connect me to that? And feel free to go back to the beginning of the video where we where we experimented with some of these questions that I posed, because that can be also very helpful to, to get you reconnected to the divine and to, to trusting yourself and life. Now, um, the new moon also makes a sextile to Mars and Taurus and Saturn and Capricorn, which are both Earth signs. So what does that mean? Now here we're getting an opportunity to be very present, right? The presence Water and earth signs have an ability to be very present. One of them in a physical way and the other one in an emotional way, very present, right? And so we get an opportunity to be very present and also to focus on practical uh, practicalities and long-term goals so we can enjoy the good things in life. And when I refer to the good things in life, I'm really referring to, to that Taurus energy, right? It's all about like, feeling good and touching things that feel good or experiencing things that feel good to the body, uh, to our 
you know, to just to our senses, right? Taurus is very much about the senses. So as best as you can, you know, bring a sense of flow and faith to who you're being and allow yourself to slow down and connect. Connect with nature, connect with your body, connect to your breath. The breath is really a beautiful thing because breath connects us to where we are at in the moment. It connects us to life, right? Because without breath, there is no life. And it also connects us to our humanness, right? It connects us to the, to, to the physical body, to the, to, the, to the physical world. So doing so, you know, just allowing yourself to slow down and connect with nature or your body or your breath, you know, will help you manifest more in less time. And I, and I don't want you to believe me necessarily, but experiment with that. See if that's true for you. Now, we don't manifest more and faster by rushing it, uh, but by simply being in tune with our creative process. And that's just my personal experience. And see if that's true for you too. Just check and see if that's also true for you. Now, ask yourself, where am I heading right now? in terms of my goals, right? Saturn and Capricorn. Where am I heading? What, what are my long-term goals? And if everything is energy and everything is always in perfect alignment on an energetic level, how could I get more in tune with my own energy body? And if I did tune in, is it all at least possible that I could then be in perfect alignment with my goals? So I want you to really uh, slow down here with these questions and just really get very present to what these questions are pointing to, right? So if everything was energy, you know, how can you be more in tune with your own energy body, right? And then also, if you tuned in with your own energy body, is it possible that you could be in perfect alignment with your goals already? If, any, if everything is energy, right? And what would trusting the unfolding of my goals look like? What would that look like if we, if we just trusted that? Maybe 5% more than usual. <laughs> now, use this intuitive time as an opportunity to tap into your intuitive and imaginative abilities. Our imagination can be very powerful. And it can be powerful in, in both, both directions, in the direction of like creating a, a, a higher vibrational and lighter vibrational path for us, but it can also be very powerful in creating a lower vibrational or more denser path for us. So imagination can go both ways, and I want you to be very conscious of that, right? What do you do with your imagination or with your imaginative abilities? Do you imagine the best? Do you imagine the worst? And then focus a new once you've imagined, you know, where, where it is that you want to be going, uh, then focus anew on what's important for you. Again, without rushing it. Without rushing it, focus on the actual action steps or the actual physical um, necessities that can get you to that, to, that, uh, to that visualization or to that level that you want to go to. But remember, it does, you don't have to rush it. It doesn't mean that everything has to happen now. We're so conditioned, especially in the Western world, that everything is instant. Everything has to happen right away. Delivery has to be boom. If it's five minutes late, we're upset, right? So, but what is, how does that serve us, right? How does that serve us in our own manifesting processes? You know, is that really how we can manifest the best way? So, um, so really check in and see, see what works for you, what works best for you around this. Now, Mercury uh, is also in Pisces and is in the last degree of Pisces and stationing because it just started its retrograde phase a day before the new moon becomes exact. So therefore, Mercury is very exalted in this new moon chart. And so this really brings awareness to our thinking processes, 
and how we process and share information. Uh, we're more sensitive to our surroundings because in Pisces, you know, everything is transparent. You know, we feel everything. Energy connects us to everything, right? So we're more sensitive to our surroundings and we feel more affected by what others say or think. With, Pis with Mercury in Pisces, uh, we have a much stronger connection to the energy field out there. And because thoughts are also energy, we tend to also know what other people are thinking, whether that's conscious or unconscious, but we, we kind of sense it, right? We feel more into it. So we're definitely more affected by, by what we surround ourselves with in terms of people and if it's, a, if it's positive or negative in terms of the energy field, right? Um, so we're also more aware of our own inner dialogue and how connected or separate we feel to God or source or the universe in terms of our own inner dialogue. So I really want to invite you here with this Mercury station to pay attention to what's in your face right now. What are you most aware of? What are you sensing? What are you feeling? What are you picking up on? Energetically speaking, through your mind, right? What's what, and also you in a dialogue, very important. So ask yourself here, what might I hear if I listen to my intuitive, creative thought forms? So what might I hear if I actually listened to my intuitive, creative thought forms? And this, again, this is something you want to take your time with because this might not, if you're not already practicing this, this might not come easily to you. Just take your time with it. And then also, what messages might I get if I paid 5% more attention to my dreams? Dreams. Pisces is very much connected to the dream world, to our dreams. The unconscious, right? The dreams are usually what we're processing on an unconscious level. So what messages might I get if I paid 5% more attention to my dreams? or to the subtle messages or energies inside and outside of me. So there's always energies that are flowing, that, that we're immersed in, right? Because we're immersed in, if everything is energy, we're immersed in this energy, right? So, um, so what messages might I get when I listen to the subtle energies inside or outside of me? What, what messages might I get if I listen to my sixth sense? You know, that, that sixth sense, usually connected to the third eye. What might I get when I, when I tune into that? And how does self-trust show up? So, and that's, that's probably a, more of a loaded question, the last one. You know, how does self-trust show up? I would maybe journal on that or meditate on that because... Um, you know, very often we have an interesting relationship to self-trust, a lot of us, you know, because we don't either learn how to trust ourselves growing up or we trust ourselves, but then that trust gets damaged somehow through interactions with other people or through life experiences. So just see what's your relationship to self-trust? How does that show up in your life? Now, these next three weeks after March 5th, when Mercury starts to go retrograde, are an optimal time to catch up on unfinished business, repair what's not working, reconnecting with people, places, or things that bring us closer to our divinity or to just opening our heart, uh, and to a compassionate approach to life, of course, as well. Because when we open our heart, right, we tend to have more compassion towards ourselves and others. And also, this is also an optimal time to do research, creating uh, research in regards to creative or spiritual pro projects, or also research in regards to ideas that are coming in um, that we'd like to engage on or engage in or learn about. Anything that's coming through intuitively, right? So we really want to pay attention to that and, and connect with that uh, during the Mercury retrograde. So especially also in the area of life where Mercury shows up in our natal chart. And th that will be different for each one of us, right? Or from, you know, 
For some of us, it will be the same area, but not for all of us, right? So if you want to know how the Mercury retrograde in Pisces is going to impact you personally and where that shows up in your chart, feel free to watch uh, the MP4 video presentation of our last forum that we just had a couple of, uh, like a week ago. Uh, when we applied what's coming up in terms of the Mercury station phases, the Mercury retrograde phases, uh, coming up in regards to our own birth charts, right? So we also have a quick preview for that webinar. If you want to check that out, it's like a 12 minute excerpt that's available either on YouTube, uh, on my YouTube channel or via my homepage on my website. If you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you'll see Mercury retrograde in Pisces, a 12 minute excerpt and just click on that and watch that if you, if you want to. Um, and then if you want to watch the whole webinar and want to get the full benefit, it's 90 minutes long, the whole webinar, uh, go to my website and look for services and hover over that link on the, on the top right hand corner of the website and then click on webinars. There will be more things that will show up when you hover over services and then click on webinars. Or I will also actually, I will also add a link to, below this video as well. So you can just click on that link below the video too, if that's easier. Uh, now, if you're already a star superstar member of my online community, please check your email for the link to this webinar. If you haven't seen it yet, I was uh, I emailed it to you on February 20th. Okay. Now, uh, Mercury in Pisces also aligns with Chiron in Aries uh, because Mercury is in the last degree of Pisces, and Chiron in Aries is in the in zero degrees of Aries, in the very beginning of Aries. So this amplifies the message to be conscious of our individual healing journey. So with this, and also with this Mercury retrograde, you know, as it starts, it's connected to our individual healing journey. So connected uh, uh, in particular to the feminine and masculine energies within us, right? Because Mercury is in, in a feminine sign and Chiron is in a masculine sign. So we're really being invited here to to bring the feminine and masculine energies together. And we're being invited to forgive our own humanness and take unique actions, you know, to allow ourselves to be different, to be unique, and to forgive for ourselves for our own humanness. Because we sometimes we can be really hard on ourselves when we're human, right? And human just means, you know, we're exploring, we're experimenting, we're making mistakes, we have flaws. That's part of being human. It's also part of what, what makes us attracted, attractive to other people and what makes us want to connect with other people is that humanness, right? But for ourselves, sometimes in our own inner dialogue, we tend to not really see it in a positive light, right? We, all, we sometimes see this, this humanness as like a failure or we're not spiritual enough or we're not enlightened enough, right? But it's really important to just forgive ourselves for being human. And it, it can release so much energy, so much tension in our body, so much denseness. Um, and you know, when we're suppressing or denying our passions or our personal styles that we have of leadership or just personal styles of how we are in the world, that's really not recommended right now at this time with, with this uh, Chiron and Aries connecting to that Mercury and Pisces. So we're really wanting to let go, wanting to release some of these things. You know, we don't want to suppress things. We don't want to deny ourselves who we are. And there's really no shame in being ourselves and being courageous, independent, fast, dynamic, competitive, direct, assertive, all these Aryan things, right? All these things connected to Aries. There's no shame in being any of that. And there's no shame in being ourselves, in acting on our natural impulses, right? In being uniquely ourselves in being passionate about our own goals what we want right there's there's nothing wrong with that and so we're really invited here to shift our perspective about being sexual and passionate beings and being different or untraditional in that way and from perceiving it as weakness to allowing it to be our strength and our gift so anything connected to our identity, anything connected to our physical bodies, to our physical or sexual identities, you know, to really allow ourselves to, to let that be our strength, our gift to the world, no matter what that looks like. 
no matter how whether it's accepted or not so we're really invited to have sort of like an action oriented and direct approach to our healing journey at this time so anything that we can do to kind of like heal our own inner dynamic with ourselves so ask yourself here what if who I am is perfect even if it's not a perfect fit with the rest of society or with you know certain people in our lives with our families or whoever what if who I am is perfect even if it's not a perfect fit with the rest of society or part of society and am I asserting myself so I can walk my talk and be myself or using my anger to dominate and separate myself further from others so really check in with yourself on this one because this is something that we're not always aware of right so sometimes obviously you know if you just hear the question you might just say oh well of course I want to assert myself and walk my talk I don't want to be the other right but uh, while that's probably true most of the time, we may have days or moments where we are going into that anger and where we are wanting to dominate and separate ourselves further. So really check in with yourself. See when does that show up? When does either one show up? And how does that feel? How does it feel when the asserting yourself and walking your talk shows up? And how does it feel when the anger shows up and the wanting to separate yourself further from other people? What does that feel like? And then when do my thoughts contribute to my feeling ashamed about who I am or what I identify with? When do my thoughts contribute to that? It's very important to really be aware of what our inner dialogue is and how our thinking works. Because thinking is so often connected to conditioning. And so it's very powerful to be aware of that, to be aware of our conditioning. And how could my thoughts be healing steps on my path to self-acceptance? What would that look like if I actually had thoughts that would be healing steps on my path to self-acceptance? And then could self-acceptance include all my so-called flaws? Could that include all my so-called flaws and you know we all have a different opinion on what that is or what that looks like right and could it even include my unique impulses you know each one of us we have these unique impulses like we're this is what we don't want to go after or this is who we are or this is what excites us or this is what we're passionate about these unique impulses right can that be a part of our self-acceptance what are we approve of these unique impulses or not right sometimes we approve of them and we think oh they're really great sometimes we don't approve of our own unique impulses right and that also again has to do with our conditioning if an impulse was rewarded we usually approve of it if an impulse was not rewarded and was punished or judged or criticized we usually don't uh, approve of those impulses within ourselves so could I even include all these unique impulses, whether I approve or disapprove of them? And what's a simple way I could be more compassionate with myself today? What's a simple way I could be more compassionate with myself today about all of this, right? And so if we are to fully function in this world, if that's a desire that we have, that we want to fully function in this world, we may want to embrace all of who we are and how we see ourselves, including our physical body, our feeling body, our gender identities, all of it. Our spiritual body, mental body, <laughs> right? Energetic body, whatever, whatever we can perceive or connect with, right? We want to really include all of it. Now the last planetary position that is important to talk about with this new moon chart and then we're done is Uranus moves into Taurus eight hours before the new moon becomes exact. Now why is this so important? Because whenever a planet is in zero degrees or 29 degrees of any sign, 
that is an exalted degree. So we're really feeling this Uranus in Taurus is at zero degree, literally zero, zero degree as the new moon becomes exact. So this is a very exalted position in this new moon chart. So as best as you can, think back over the last eight years, you know, while Uranus was in Aries before it entered Taurus, and ask yourself, since 2011, in what ways have I been able to connect to my individual self? And am I more in touch with my own uniqueness now versus then? So now 2019 versus 2011. And what shifts or changes have I been through in the last eight years? What shifts or changes? Maybe there were some awakenings that, that some of you experienced. Or maybe there were some shifts in particular areas of your life. May, it may not apply to all of your life, but to some areas of your life, right? And what has inspired progress around my personal goals or around self-identity? So what has inspired progress in the last eight years around personal goals or around self-identity? What, what I identify myself as or with? And of course, our personal goals usually are a part of that, right? They're part of our self-identity very often. Now, with Uranus in Taurus, we are getting a chance for the next eight years to have an amazing new exploration of our own values and our connection to earth to this planet to our bodies to our physical bodies or our resources and talents so what you want to ask yourself here is how might technology or particular inventions support my values how might that be possible and just kind of fantasize if you can't think of something concrete just Make something up, right? How could that support my values? And what needs to shift on a collective level in regards to what we value and how we make use of our resources? And resources can be a lot of things, right? Can, can be the resources of the earth, of the planet. Could be resources in terms of money, finances. Could be resources in terms of like what we have to offer personally, on a personal level, right? Our personal talents can be resources, right? So what needs to shift on a collective level in regards to what we value and how we make use of our own resources, of our resources, collectively, individually speaking, right? And what breakthroughs will we make when it comes to our physical body, to the planet, and how we exchange payments what breakthroughs will we have in the next eight years? So these are just some things that we can contemplate. Now, one last thing I want to mention about Uranus is Uranus has two major modes. Uh, it is the energy of reactivity and intuitiveness. And so it, it, it wants to break through something. So we either break, have breakthroughs in a reactive kind of a way or we have breakthroughs in an intuitive kind of a way. And Uranus, of course, is also connected to change, right? So, but change can either happen on a reactive level or on an intuitive level through in, being inspired, right? Now, as best as you can, notice how those modes will play out for you. And just remember that reactive would lead pretty much every time to harm in some way, whether that's to yourself or to others or to the collective. The intuitive version of Uranus is always life-giving. It's, 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 it creates breakthroughs on a life-giving level. So I really want you to keep that in mind and remain conscious and choose well. Choose well and remain conscious. Now, if you want to know how Uranus, Uranus's journey through Taurus until 2026 and Chiron's journey through Aries until 2027 impacts you personally. Feel free to get my uh, two hour long webinar on the subject, so 120 minutes long. And 
uh, to, to have more information about that or to purchase that webinar, feel free to click on the link below this video. Uh, I'll put a link there so you can just click on that. Uh, the fee for this webinar is only $37, even though this webinar is 30 minutes longer than my usual webinars. They're usually just 90 minutes long. Um, and you can also check out a brief excerpt of this webinar. I usually have those available as well so that you can see if this is for you or if this is something you actually want to engage with, if this format works for you, right? So either via YouTube, my YouTube channel again or on my website, if you look for astrology videos or Chiron or Uranus, any of those categories will, will lead you towards that, um, that excerpt. Um, and uh, I also want to invite you to take a look at uh, uh, some articles that I wrote uh, on both of these subjects. So there's two articles that I wrote on Uranus and Taurus and Chiron and Aries. If you haven't seen them yet, uh, you can go to astrology articles um, on, my, on my website in, on the blog page. Uh, in the categories, there's astrology articles, and then just scroll t scroll down until you find, uh, you know, until you find the, um, the the article about uh, Uranus in Taurus and about uh, Chiron in Aries. Okay, now uh, feel free to also join my online community um, to get access to the full article because. Um, these articles are some of the articles are available to the public, but uh, not the whole article is available to the public. So if you're a member, you get to read the full article. If you're not a member yet, then you can only read some of the article. So feel free if you want to read the whole article, if you want to, uh, you know, get access to uh, all my unique or special content, astrology content, or to all my videos, you know. Um, feel free to join the online community and there's several levels available uh, that you can join. Now, to sum it all up, uh, for this new moon in Pisces, since Neptune, which is the ruler of Pisces, as I mentioned earlier already, is currently in its own sign, that brings a really clear message for us for the next 28 days. So as best as you can, unplug, listen deeply to your heart and soul Whatever, whatever that means to you, however you want to do that, and allow for all feelings to flow. Allow for yourself to be with what is, what is now, what is in the present moment. You know, feel into the present moment. And then also tap into the divinity within through uh, some of the following activities. You know, I mean, there's so many things we can do, right? And, and I'm just going to mention a few just to give you some inspiration, but feel free to, to do other things as well. Meditation is a great way to get in touch with our own inner divinity. Being in nature, music, dance, energy healing, dream work, creative writing, art, uh, you know, and then any way you want to connect to your intuition, you know, so uh, it's really important that we, that we understand how important silence is, you know, really, because in the silence, we feel the oneness with all there is, and we feel the unconditional love of the universe that, that we are always connecting with, and it's always available to us, and that the universe always provides, but we need to be able to be in silence. And that, of course, for, for, for our, our, our life that we live in, in the Western world, it, you know, there are some challenges that we have to overcome when it comes to being in silence. It's not so easy sometimes to just be in silence with ourselves, right? Because of all the noise, the outside noise and all the outside distractions that we uh, constantly get bombarded with, right? But take five-minute breaks or take take naps, you know, here or there, uh, if that's at all possible. And so you can really get quiet and be with yourself and, and, and tune into that intuitive feeling self. And you can also ask yourself, you know, what might become possible if I gave this to my body and my mind on a regular basis? If I could really take those breaks and take those naps or tune in with myself on a regular basis? And what might a healthy connection with the energetic world feel like? What does that feel like to have that healthy connection? And maybe you've already experienced it quite often. 
but we, we don't usually live there, right? We don't live in that healthy connection with the energetic world. And what if I were 5% more interested in my inner world? What if I simply embraced whatever I discovered there? So for this last question, maybe let's just close our eyes and just ask yourself, could I simply allow what is to just be just for this very moment? Maybe even connect to your breath as well as you're posing that question. So see what happens when you move with all as well, right? No matter what the appearance or view looks like out there in the world, all the distractions, all the stuff that we hear or see or are engaged in, trust your inner senses. This is something that we need to relearn, right? Because we, we're not conditioned to trust our inner senses. So we're very conditioned to focus on the outside world and, and look, look for the outside world for answers to be told, you know, what the right answers are and to close ourselves off or to protect ourselves, right? So ask yourself, what results might I get if I tapped into my inner courage, my inner sensing, my intuition? Again, these are all similar questions, but I think they're so important, right? The power of compassion, you know, and what if I tapped into all of them at the same time? What might that give me? And I also, uh, I want to close uh, the video with saying that I also have a quote that I think fits really well with this new moon energy. So um, if you want to read that quote, you can access to this quote via my new moon article on my website. Um, and that will be available to all of my members for sure. And I think uh, it's also available to the public, but not all of it. So there's some of the new moon. I, I, will, I will make sure that the quote is available to the public as well. So you can go to that new moon article. Okay. Now, um, last question. Do you have your ascendant or any personal planets in 14 to 18 degrees of Pisces, Virgo, Gemini, or Sagittarius? And if you do, then you might feel the energy of this new moon more strongly. And you might really want to pay attention to uh, what the energies are currently and, and work with the coaching questions in this video. Now, even if you don't have uh, any personal planets or an ascendant in those degrees and signs, take a look at your natal chart and just look to see where does 15 and a half, 16 degrees of Pisces land in your own birth chart. Because the house placement of this new moon will indicate which area of your life is most impacted for the next 28 days when it comes to everything that we talked about in this video. Now you can also check out my 30 minute class, how to read your birth chart. If that, if you don't know how to look that up in your own chart, uh, you can get free access right now via my homepage uh, at astrologicoach.com to that video. And you just need to scroll down on the homepage to where it says free class. And then if you click on that link, it will, it will, take you to that class, how to read my birth chart. And that will show you, you know, how you can look in your own chart to find what area of life will be most affected. Before we talk about intentions, let me just say that you might also want to join us live on March 20th for our next forum. We will talk about the spring equinox, which will be exact on March 20th on the day of the webinar. And we will also talk about the Jupiter station and retrograde phases in early April. So if you want to know, uh, you know, what the springtime will bring for, for you and in what ways, uh, you know, you can be expanding and growing more with that Jupiter station and retrograde phase in early April, then feel free to either join us live again on March 20th at 6 p.m. Uh, New York time, 10 p.m. London time. Uh, just remember that March 20th, we will already have summertime in America and the United States. Uh, but it will not be summertime yet in Europe uh, or in some other countries. So uh, please keep that in mind. That's why it's 6 p.m. New York time and 10 p.m. London time. Now, if you're not yet a star or superstar member of my online community, you can register 
via my homepage, if you scroll down uh, to the countdown towards the next forum and just click there to register and then you can register for this particular forum. Um, if you are a star or superstar member, uh, you're automatically registered, so you don't need to register. And you will also receive an email on the day of the webinar to join live, as well as a video presentation of the forum within 24 hours of the live event. Okay, so that's both available to my star and superstar members. Now, let's talk about intentions. Uh, the moment you guys have been waiting for for a long time. Uh, or, or maybe you've just jumped to the intentions already too. Uh, now the new moon is of course the best time to set some powerful intentions for the next 28 days for this moon cycle. So uh, you want to make sure that you set intentions after the new moon becomes exact and not during a moon board of course phase. Now if you want to know more about that feel free to read my article on that on the subject of moon void of course phases it's on available on my website for the public for everybody um, but let's let's just uh, see when is the best and most potent time to set the intentions for this month for this particular month now between 11 or 4 a.m. which is when the new moon becomes exact on March 6th and 208 p.m. the next day on March 7th that's a very very potent time to set your intentions and then there's going to be a moon word, of course, for a brief time. And then again, from 3.27 p.m. on March 7th until 11.04 a.m. on March 8th. And all of this is New York time, um, uh, Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. Okay, so if you live in a different time zone other than Eastern Standard Time, uh, you can convert these times uh, uh, online. You can use a, a time zone converter, um, but if, if that's too complicated for you, you don't want to do that, I suggest just joining my Facebook fan page or follow me on Twitter because I will be posting reminders continuously through those most potent times to let you know when it's, when it's time to set your intentions, okay? So that's available, and for more information about setting intentions, if you're new to that process, uh, you can go to my website and go to my blog page and then look for astrology articles and look for the tag new moon intentions. Remember the tags are on the right hand side of, of the blog page via computer underneath the categories or all the way at the bottom of the blog page if you look at it from a phone. You can also sign up for a free monthly newsletter uh, if you like. Uh, that includes um, special offers, the new moon videos, announcements that I make about my business or courses or anything that I offer um, or anything that changes. So um, that's my newsletter. If you're interested in receiving that once a month uh, or approximately once a month, then feel free to either sign up for my newsletter on my homepage on my website at astrologycoach.com or you can also email us at info at astrologycoach.com and just write newsletter in the subject line whatever you want, whatever is easier for you. Now, that's it for this new moon. Uh, my members will see me in two weeks around the time of the full moon so we can look at how far we've come since setting our new moon intentions. And everyone else will see me in four weeks for the next new moon. Um, if you have any general questions about astrology, you can always feel free to reach out to me via email at info at astrologycoach.com. If you have any personal questions, however, uh, that requires of me to pull up your birth chart, I will ask you to either book a reading on my website or you can also ask questions connected to what's coming up within the next 30 to 40 days during the monthly forecasting forum on March 20th. Okay, so all of that is still available. Have a good one. Have a fantastic new moon. And remember to go within. It's an introverted time. All the best. This is Astrologer Coach Sonia Francis. Goodbye.